hitting the campaign trail. President Trump heads to central Wisconsin today for a rally. He is pledging to hold m m 10 more rallies across the country before the midterm elections. This comes as he sets the stage for another round of tax cuts. Watch this. It'll be great for the middle class. It's going to be a tax reduction of 10 percent for the middle class. Business will not enter into it. We'll put that in. We'll start the work after the uh, sometime after the midterms. And joining me right now is counsel to the president, uh, President Trump, Kellyanne Conway, joining us right now outside the White House. Kellyanne, great to see you this morning. Thanks so much for joining us. Great to be with you, Maria. Thank you. Well, I know the president gets empowered by these rallies. You see him out there, and he just seems to be enjoying himself. Do you think the fact that he's been working so hard campaigning for the Republicans, has that helped move the needle in terms of turnout for the Republican voter? It has indeed. It's moved the needle in the president's approval ratings, and it's moved the needle for many of these candidates. If you look at the polling, um, there the president, as he notes, there he's competing in states that really Republicans weren't competing in previously, and I think it's starting to feel a lot like 2016 out there, at these rallies and out in the hustings, where people note that the president cuts through the noise and cuts through the silence, the things that aren't getting covered by the mainstream media, and then the things that are covered. Uh, over in an overwrought way that he gets to yeah. cut out the middleman and get his message directly to the people. The other thing, Maria, is the crowds are very similar, maybe even larger in some places than they were in 2016 for a very simple reason. People were drawn to President to candidate Trump's message and promises then and his his status as a disruptor who had never held political office but had a great amount of experience, successful and success in business. But now they're saying thank you for keeping those promises. Thank you for the greatest economic boom of our lifetimes. Thank you for the blue collar wages going up. Thank you for yeah. the low unemployment, high growth numbers, high optimism numbers. People are there to say thank you. My small business was teetering on the brink and now through the tax cuts, the trade policies and certainly deregulation, we're expanding, we're hiring people. People feel like they have job mobility now, not just job yeah. availability and job security. They can move yeah, around. Yeah, let me ask you about that. And they're saying because thank the you by showing up at these rallies. The, the economic backdrop is very strong. I mean, we're seeing it in the numbers. I, I recognize yes. that. 4.2 percent growth. We're going to get another GDP number on Friday, and we are expecting it to be above 3 percent. So, Kellyanne, why is the president needing to cut taxes again if things are going so well? I, I mean, he's talking about a 10 percent middle class tax cut. I know that he wants to make the individual cuts permanent. That's one thing. But do we need another tax cut in the face of this trillion dollar deficit that we're talking about and these worries over debt? right now. No, part, but, but Maria, part of why the president would like to continue to cut taxes on the middle class is because it has gone so well. He sees the fruits of that Tax Cut and Jobs Act, which passed last December without a single Democratic vote. And many right. of them are, look like they're paying the price at home, if you look at their polling, because they're left to explain why their vote against the tax cuts is a vote against 20,000 new Apple jobs coming to the U.S., a vote against the 8 million Americans receiving bonuses or raises or both, a vote against the repatriation of trillions of dollars of wealth that's been parked legally overseas, a vote against reducing that corporate tax rate from 35 to 21 percent, and thereby just spurring a great economic boom. Look, the last president, Obama, he told us that 2% or less was the new normal. We're double that now under the Trump economy. Right. No wonder Obama's trying to take credit for the Trump economy. And that's not going to happen. But the, the, I think Chairman Brady at Ways and Means and Larry Kudlow, our National Economic uh, Council director, and the president are working to see how to make this uh, go through the process. We want the middle class to continue to benefit but, from lower taxes. But this can't possibly... This can't possibly happen before the midterms. The midterms are 13 days away, and this has to be voted on, and Congress is not, the House is not even in session. Well, Washington moves a little bit too slowly for the sheer volume and velocity of the Trump agenda. There's no doubt about that. But it's good that the president's out there redoubling his commitment to the middle class and, and really lessening their tax burden. Look, I think what the president's been able to do for the middle class at average is about 2,000 in, in net tax uh, deductions here, a uh, lower liability, I should say, plus the child care tax credit and some other benefits that were in there targeted really at our middle class, where their their wages are rising also. In overall incomes mm. are up, not just the wages, but overall incomes for the middle class are up. And Maria, I think what's really amazing is that we have people telling us that I'm no longer just looking for a job, I'm looking for a different job, one closer to home or one where yeah. the benefits package is better. And we're not even tackling yet all the community-based investments some of these 
corporations are making. They're taking that tax savings. They're certainly investing it in their workplaces and their workforces, but they're also investing it in the larger communities. And, and that's just a boon to everybody. Yeah, no, for sure. We, we are seeing a, a much better environment. So just to be clear, the president is talking to us about plans that he may implement after the midterm elections, should he have the, the, the environment to do so. I mean, there's, there's no way we're going to see lower taxes in the next 13 days. I mean, just, just to be clear, the president's talking to us about what he plans post the midterms, correct? Well, that, that's, that's up to the chairman of Ways and Means and the Congress as well. Obviously, there's no executive right. order to sign to lower these tax burdens. It has to right, go through course, the legislative right. process. But it's good One that this president... One other thing that the president has... Yeah. Please. One other thing that the president has been able to do, uh, and many others were afraid to do, was push back on China. And, you know, I think both sides of the aisle have to agree that this had to be done since China has been stealing from us from, for decades. They won't even admit it. But there's a good op-ed in the journal today. You probably saw it. It's called Let's okay. Vote on a China Cold War. It basically suggests that the administration scale back the trade and tariff talk with China, going so far as not engaging for a bit. Um, this could go on a long time, this fight with China, right, Kellyanne? Is the president still optimistic about finding common ground? What, what's plan B, and how does that impact America if, in fact, we're in this sort of Cold War, if you will, with China for, for, for a year? Well, we're still, the so president is still forging ahead with plan A, Maria, which is uh, noting for Americans that, as you say, China has been stealing our intellectual property and other things for a very long time. And why do we have a half a trillion dollar deficit, trade deficit with China? And so the president very early on in this presidency established a good working relationship with President Xi of China. And we understand that we can work on major issues together. But um, also the Chinese economy is suffering. And as that same Wall Street Journal op-ed points out, uh, China is its own worst enemy on many things. Look, if I was sitting down with President Xi, I would tell him to get his fentanyl the heck out of our country. It was responsible yeah, for killing no, 30,000 I... Americans, and the president has put that toward him. We have other senior administration officials working on this as well. The president is signing bipartisan legislation today on opioids, and part of that is the STOP Act. It basically will compel our U.S. Postal Service to share with Customs and Border Patrol advanced electronic data so these packages coming in from china and mexico we know exactly what's in them yeah. they often contain these drugs and it's been a year since this administration launched the fight against the opioid crisis the president made the remarks today on the progress congratulations on this progress this is important to all americans kelly and it's good to see you this morning thank thanks you, so Maria. much kelly and Connolly is at the white house